Welcome to another episode of the Straight Up Chicago Investor Podcast. I'm Tom Shawcross. With me, as always, is Mark Ainley. Mark, you're giving me funny looks over there. What's what's up? I'm excited. You know, we were doing two shows in in uh, two days, so uh, it's awesome. Back to back, Jacks, and we're heading out to the Western Burbs today. This will be good. Yes, yes, that's uh, my my hood. Yeah, close enough. So. You're working on your project right now. I know you came to wrap up. You experienced something that uh, I know I've experienced many times. Kind of give uh, some insight what you're going through. Yeah. So, man, you, you do like a 200K rehab. And then when you're done, I mean, regardless of how big or small the rehab is, do this simple little checklist to make sure everything's working. Make sure water pressure is good, hot water is running, windows go up and down, door latches. Just do that checklist of everything. And Mark, we can just put that in the show notes. Um, I, you don't want to get that maintenance call on day one on something that would be so simple to take care of before the tenant moves in there. The place can look beautiful. It can pass inspection. It can be all great. But then like from a usability standpoint, is everything working for the person who's going to reside there? You cannot depend on your contract to do that. Think about this. It just took you, uh, the last few weeks to get that last 10% done, get your contractor back in, get all that wrapped up. The last thing they're worried about is door stops or making sure hot water uh, works on the upstairs vanity or, um, the other one that we get, uh, often is, you know, just the, just the remote for the garage or opener. If that, that's one of those things, uh, all those little things that, uh, you know, we call it our rent ready list, kind of that punch list, it, you know, it, smoke detectors and, and so forth. Yeah, those guys, if not specifically written in the bid, might've just glanced over it. And, uh, and you now are dealing with pissing off your brand new tenant that was excited. They came and saw the beautifully rehab property, but now day one, they move in and functionally, these things start going wrong. You know, a closer on the front door or the doorbell, the doorbell is another one that uh, is easily missed. It just doesn't exist. Or I, I've done this one before the mailbox, the mailbox just says you, you forgot to put the mailbox and you're not getting mail there. So you never really recognize it to be an issue. Um, you know, it, street addresses sometimes, uh, but there's all these little rent ready lists. And uh, I'm happy. I, I have uh, something I can share with you that we kind of look at if uh, we could put that in the show notes as well too. So, but yeah, that, that last 10% that you're trying to uh, get that contract out for he, the last thing he's worried about is those 30 or 40 items. That's going to aggravate your tenant the day they move in. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do we get a housing provider tip of the week on top of this? Yeah, He's that was kind of the housing provider tip. So I'm, I'm going to flip this. Like it almost, this could have been the, the banter that we do. But you know what? I, I was talking with, uh, I just got done reading uh, Warren Buffett's biography. It's like 37, I listened to it. It's like 37 hours long. So double speed, it's 18 hours, but awesome. And the one thing that I took away from, the biggest thing I took away from uh, this Buffett biography is amazing individual. Like if I could uh, process numbers like him, like, Gosh, like even a quarter of what he could do would be amazing. But the one thing he is always like his drive was always what was behind his drive and, and his success is always learning. It was the littlest things. He was always, you know, it was just picking up the magazine when he's waiting there. He was, he reads things from cover to cover. He just took in information. Um, and that is something that uh, I've grown to do a lot more. I mean, nothing in comparison to him, but if you're out there and you want, you have these big, uh, big goals and big dreams of, of, uh, of, of doing that. Even as a landlord, everyday landlord, maybe you only have two properties or maybe you're about to buy your first, keep learning. And, and some of that learning might just be about the, the politics locally and how you need to maneuver them for the property that you'll eventually build down the road. But always keep, uh, keep learning and always, you know, there's other books that will say that uh, you should prioritize and, and almost schedule uh, kind of continuing learning for yourself, you know, whether it be your, your morning routine or you're reading X amount of hours uh, uh, a week or X amount of books per year. Uh, there's got to be, you got to find a way to make that fit in your schedule if you struggle to find time to do so, because that is going to be the difference between uh, uh, being successful and uber successful. I dig it. So that was more of a preaching than a housing provider tip. So but man, the Warren Buffett book is awesome uh, just because they walked through all the different deals he did over the years and how someone went bad and all that stuff. So it, it was really, uh, it was really interesting. It, it went really fast. So I, I recommend it to anybody. What I found the, one of the most interesting parts of biographies, like after reading uh, shoe dog is like when they get kicked in the teeth, mm -hmm. right. And they open up about getting kicked in the teeth and how they reacted. Like that's, that's very intriguing to me. Well, that's what you and me started this podcast for, to hear about people getting kicked in the teeth and how, no, seriously, like that, that's so, uh, our guest today, you're, you're listening, you, you need to uh, uh, make sure you tell us how you got kicked in the teeth. So the mistakes you made, we, we <laughs> all learn from other people's mistakes more so than gloat on other people's successes. So, all right, cool. So I'm going to introduce um, today's guest. Today's guest is a real estate agent and we'll talk about why he got his real estate license. He is an investor. He is 
the definition of finding a niche and focusing on it. So today's show uh, is about Naperville and we'll talk about kind of the, the surrounding suburbs around Naperville. Naperville has a humongous population. Um, I'm not going to quote it, but I think it's north of 200,000. Um, so it's an entire economy by itself out there kind of with Aurora and Naperville. Uh, we've had Aurora show before with uh, Sean Morrissey, which was an awesome episode. We're going to kind of do the same thing today here with Naperville. So Josh Mitchell, he lives in, in Naperville. He went to school at North Central. He played, he played football there. Um, you know, we actually manage, uh, his first, uh, house hack that he had right now for somebody he sold it to. So that, that's, uh, I, I manage your old bedroom. It's kind of funny. Um, but, uh, without further ado, Josh Mitchell. So welcome aboard here today, Josh. Did I sell you short? Did anything more you want to add on to that, uh, kind of your history? Yeah, Mark has, uh, you know, been in the area here for, uh, six, seven years, met the wife at, at North central. So, um, she was born and raised here and, and of course, you know, happy wife, happy life. So, that's why we're uh, still in the area, but love it. Um, absolutely love the Naperville area. Uh, and yeah, small world that uh, you're managing, you know, one of my clients' uh, first rentals in, in the area as well and, and how he house hacked uh, that, that place specifically. So that's, it's kind of a small world, how it all comes together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So what is it? Uh, so let me start here. Uh, you know, me and Tom get asked this, converse, this question all the time. Um, I, I have a stance on it. Um, what made you, as you're starting to buy properties, what interests you in getting your actual real estate license? Yeah, for me, it was just more so, um, you know, to be frank, I, I got tired of paying agents to, to do that kind of work for me. And, and I wanted to see properties faster than, than what I was getting them sent to me. So, you know, getting that access to the MLS, having that, um, you know, first look at the private networks, um, you know, connecting with other agents in the office has been, you know, a huge, uh, benefit for me as well, just for, you know, getting, picking their brains and kind of maybe getting some listings that are coming to market that haven't even hit the private market. Um, and, and really just kind of building that, that network, uh, to get, you know, leads and, and kind of lead generation has, has been kind of the driving force of why I got my license. Gotcha. So you joined, uh, a Remax office. I think that's, uh, down there, uh, near you, but, you know, I, yep. I get also the question all the time. I think me and Tom had the question, uh, conversation as well too, not too long ago of like, you know, where should I hang my license? Like what are some deciding factors that you think is important to, you know, a lot of people run out and get their license and they're like, Oh, Oh, oh crap. I gotta, I gotta do something with it now. Like what are some things that yeah. people in Chicago here running, getting their license uh, once they get their license, uh, what, what should they consider when trying to choose a place to hold their license? Yeah. I mean, for me, it was, um, you know, I had a, a few connections at the Remax office already. You know, the, some of the agents that I worked with previously on uh, some of my rentals um, were actually in that office. So that kind of swayed me. Um, but, you know, the managing broker is a huge resource that you need to almost interview them. You know, it, you got to make sure that you're able to connect with them. You're able to ask them questions. They're going to be there for you. They're going to help you. They're going to kind of guide you through, especially that first, you know, six months to a year. Um, it, it can be a tough business. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I think the, the stats are most agents last less than two years. Um, so, you know, you got to really just kind of lean on the people that, that you're going to be working with, make sure that they're, you know, able to, to provide some insight, help you guide you, you know, maybe give you a lead or two if you're lucky, if you have a good, a good agent or a good managing broker um, and, and really just kind of build that connection with, with the people that have been established in the business. And, and, and again, are going to help and guide you to kind of build your own. Gosh, quick timeline. Were you investing and then you decided to get your license? Like talk through. And then did you also, were you working at W2? Did you go, Hey, I'm going full-time into the agency world here. Walk us through like yeah. that timeline there. Yeah. So how I first got started, you know, growing up in kind of through my college years, um, I knew I wanted to get into real estate investing and be involved in the industry. I just wasn't really sure how. Um, so in my mind, you know, my, the most important thing was, was how do I do this? How are people buying and selling and, and, and doing everything through real estate investing? So um, what I did is get involved in the banking world. So I actually, you know, started there. Um, and really tried to learn and, and was actually a mortgage broker for a little while. So I learned that end of it, um, got the, the experience and, and all the guidelines from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all those, you know, rules and, and things that they kind of uh, make you follow in order to, to start investing. They're really learning about, you know, the FHA loans and the, the conventional loans and, and portfolio loans. And, and that was a huge step for, for you know, developing the, um, skills and the necessary things that you need to know in order to invest. Um, so me and my wife actually house hacked our, our first condo, um, bought that one and then, you know, moved into a, 
a 600 square foot apartment to to rent out that condo is kind of how we started this whole game. So it was uh, a, a fun year, I would say, with a, a little hesitation there. But uh, you know, 600 feet can be a little tight with a wife and a, a dog. So we uh, we did that for a year, and that's kind of how we started the game. Awesome. Nice, nice. All right, so let's dive into Naperville. Um, if you explain to the listeners out there, you know, is there a difference in uh, areas where you're in Naperville? It kind of gives us a one-on-one on, on how you would describe Naperville as far as the housing stock, territories, areas, and so forth. Yeah, so, you know, Naperville, obviously, it's probably to the, all the listeners here uh, is well-known. I mean, it's been voted, I think, best place to live or top three best places to live in the country for many years in a row now. So beautiful downtown area. Um, it has the river walk, shops, restaurants, everything that you could, you know, really want. Um, but with that kind of comes in that higher end home on the north side of Naperville. You know, you get your, your downtown area, immediate area. Uh, is going to give you a lot of the, you know, the higher end finishes, the higher end tear down houses, the new builds, um, that kind of thing. Um, kind of moving south towards the Plainfield area, you know, you're going to be looking at, at the bigger lots, the the more suburban feel. The, you get all the restaurants, the stores and everything you, that you could ever want, you know, down 59, south 59. But um, it gives a, a little bit more space. Some, some, some people like that. Some people like to have that, you know, like I said, suburban feel with the um, half acre lots or, you know, a little bit smaller than that. But, um, you know, for the most part, it, it's a lot of single families, not a, not a ton of multifamily uh, action in, in the Naperville, immediate in Naperville area. Um, a lot of townhouses, condos that, that kind of give a little bit of opportunity, but um, those are kind of hit or miss too for, you know, making the numbers work and all that stuff too. You, you, use, you described it as north and south, like what would be the border of, uh, or what would kind of be the, the breakdown or what road? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of uh, use 75th as that that breakdown, um, north of 75th and, and south of 75th. There, it kind of gives you a, a you know a good um, division there between the the how big Naperville is. Like, it's kind of a good dividing line for you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Most of uh, Naperville is in DuPage, but that southern part is in Will County. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Yep. So you have uh, different types of housing stock. I would say you know the south um, part is a lot newer, if you'd agree with that, and then mm-hmm. the north part is yep. uh, the older homes, especially downtown area. What What are some yep. other kind of highlights of uh, that that north part um, of Naperville that you might talk? You know, maybe it's downtown or whatnot. What makes it track? Yeah, I mean the downtown area. Yeah, like I said, it, it has the Riverwalk stores, restaurants. Um, but with the north side also also comes the uh, the Metro Line too. So there's there's two lines. Um, one is actually technically Aurora, but it's right there on 59, just across the street. So, um, and then you got the downtown Naperville one that, that provides the Metro as well. You can get downtown on an express train, you know, 20, 30 minutes, um, depending on if the, the Amtrak or the uh, Metro wants to run on time. But um, yeah, it has, you know, the historic district, uh, great, great little area there in the north side um, gives you some of the, the hundred year old home antique uh, looking homes there that, some people really enjoy um, and it gives you a lot of the newer builds. I mean, you get a, a lot of the, you know, hundred year old homes that aren't in the historic district that are kind of being torn down. Uh, a lot of people are looking to rebuild uh, and get into the, the, the North side has, you know, some of the great schools um, from elementary all the way up to high school. So a lot of people like to be in this area and, and again, close to that downtown area. So kind of gives you a, a great little area to, to be in and, and really live your life without ever, you know, leaving if you don't want to. So Naperville has some highly touted schools. Can you give us a quick breakdown? Are there certain, you know, hey, we need to be north of this, south of this to be in this school district. Are there any dividing lines for that? And then just at an even broader level, just talk a little about the school system out there and why it's so attractive. Yeah. So, you know, the dividing lines, um, I'm not exactly sure what line they're so skewed in, in some areas, but you know, you got your Naperville central, Naperville North, Matea Valley, Wabonzi Valley, um, you know, a lot of different schools that are all, you know, nine out of 10s, 10 out of 10s, you know, even the elementary junior highs, I mean, they're very, very highly rated. Um, again, going back to some of those rankings nationally, I mean, Naperville schools are talked about a lot with, um, some of the higher end schools the Nequa Valley's, you know, that's probably the best one in the area, but, um, you know, I, you can't really go wrong with any of those schools. Um, it's it kind of all, it, how, well, you know, if you have a preference on certain schools, if you have a, a way, you know, you want your kid to go in, in certain areas, you, you know, you're going to look at maybe that's the determination of North or South Naperville versus, 
uh, you know, some other things that you might look at. You, well, so as far as the housing stock goes, again, you know, you invested in a handful of, I think there's a lot on the investment side of things ends up being a lot more of these smaller condo slash townhouses, depending on how they're really Mm -hmm. put in. You invested in some of those. Um, I know you sold one Mm -hmm. of yours to another one of our our clients here recently. Uh, Tell us kind of what the benefit is, or maybe the downfall of investing in some of these, these townhouses that have HOAs and so forth uh, in this market. Yeah, sure. So in Naperville, you know, it comes with the higher price point. It's, it's a place that people always, you know, kind of flock to and want to live in. So that, that condo townhouse type of property is going to give you a little bit lower price point to maybe give somebody that entry. And, and actually um, the client you were referring to that I sold the property, that's exactly what happened. You know, he wanted to get in the investment game. He wanted to be in the Naperville Aurora area. Um, didn't want to spend $300,000 on a, on a single family. I don't, you know, for whatever reason. And, and the townhouse worked out perfectly for him. Um, so it, it, a lot of people, you know, kind of view those as almost an apartment, right? I mean, they're, they're a little bit easier to rent. Um, there's not much to manage. There's not much to, to really do on a day-to-day basis. Um, but with the downfall, you do have the HOA, as you mentioned. So, you know, you're going to pay that monthly due for the things that, you know, in a single family, you might not have coming up, but once every five years. Um, but again, you don't have to worry about roof. You don't have to worry about exterior maintenance. You don't have to worry about some of those big ticket items in that HOA. Um, it, it, again, it, it, if you can make the numbers work, it, it's, it's great for some people. It, it's worked for us um, in, you know, I don't really, I don't really have a preference one way or another versus, you know, single family or, or, or townhouse condo. It's, it's about if those numbers work, right? So um, it, it, again, it kind of gives you that lower price point to maybe enter the game and, and give somebody an opportunity to start building that portfolio. What are some of the um, things you might have seen go wrong with HOAs or what have some of the headaches been in investing in these communities that have the HOAs? Yeah. So, you know, HOA, the, the main thing is they can always just change the rules. You know, one year they might have a board meeting that uh, they're no longer going to allow rentals in, in the, the property or in the complex. Um, that'd be a, a big headache and a big hassle if that uh, were to happen. Um, and also, you know, trying to be involved on some of the boards uh, is probably something that I would recommend to somebody that's going to be in, investing in a, in a complex. Um, that way you just kind of get to know exactly what everybody's thinking, exactly what everybody's kind of dealing with. But, um, you know, a lot of the issues that come up are, are, you know, common, common ground items, such as like the pool, um, you know, do we want to expand it? Do we want to keep it open longer? Do we want to have somebody maintaining it? Do we want to have somebody uh, sitting there watching it, make sure that, you know, taking attendance, quote unquote. So, you know, a lot of those just little things that you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't have to deal with at, at a single family or something like that. Um, it, you know, it, it all comes down to, to that board. So you got to kind of try to be involved in it, at least attend a couple meetings, you know, when they have them. So you can kind of keep up to date and, and get to know those people so you can, you know, talk to them directly. I've sat on a few boards over the years and I'm actually on, uh, mm-hmm. I think one still now. And I, I think that is a amazing experience as far as understanding how these buildings operate. And uh, there's also, you can find opportunity too, when uh, usually, you know, when someone needs to get out or someone's struggling on their assessments or something like that. So there's some access to yeah, absolutely. Uh, information there too. So um, if the vote comes up, I know I've gotten sucked in a couple of these boards because the conversation comes up about getting rid of rentals. And I have to, I feel I have to get on there to educate everyone on what this will do to our price values if they were to, um, get rid of rentals. And then, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times you're grandfathered in if in the HOAs when they convert it to uh, no rentals, but your options to sell only becomes to an owner occupant. And that, that's where you're struggling. You, you get less options to sell off to. So Josh, let's, let's dive into some numbers here. So can you give us an example, maybe a recent purchase or a typical purchase, you know, you're buying one of these townhomes or condos. What is a, a price point that attracts you what are what type of rent are you getting on that unit? We call it a three one, a two one. Give us whatever example might make the most sense. Uh, and then, what are the tenant expectations to get that rent? What do you need to provide as a housing provider? Yeah, so in the Naperville area, you know, some of the rents, you know, you can get a, a higher rent than maybe what you could in, in the surrounding areas. You Knowing the Aurora's or the uh, Lyles. Warren bills, um, you can, you can get a little bit higher rent here in Naperville. So typically what I look for is a minimum of two bed. Um, I like the two bed, two bath model. Um, it kind of gives, um, that attraction to, you know, maybe a family.
parents. Um, typically, you know, if you can find a uh, condo townhouse for, you know, under 130,000, it's probably going to be a pretty good deal for you. Um, you're probably going to rent that anywhere from, you know, 16 to 1900, depending on finishes and whatnot. Um, you know, you got a opportunity, a lot of people that want to be in the area, like I've mentioned before. So, you know, yeah, just recently I put up uh, one of my rentals and had about 23 calls in the last like three hours on it. So, I mean, it, it just, people just fly and, and really want to get into the area, get into schools. You get a lot of families that are calling just wanting to be in the area to, to get the kids into school. So it's uh, you got to, you know, play to that a little bit, but that's also what, what drives that rent up higher. Um, and then in regards to maintenance, you know, going from um, a townhouse condo, you know, some of the expectations, you know, I think with anything, single family, townhouse, condo, um, it's all about communication. You know, if you have a good open line of communication, you fix problems quickly, you address them uh, as soon as your tenants kind of um, send them your way. I, I think that's going to give you all the, the leg up that you need. I mean, you, they're more willing to work with you and be flexible on when you can get there. If they know you're working on it, they know you're responsive. And know you fix problems, you know, as soon as possible. Um, you know, as soon as somebody sends me something, um, I'm usually on the phone right away with with one of my contractors or or, or I'm going myself to check it out. Um, and I think that's with any property. Um, the faster you can get to it, the faster you can address it. I think more understanding and more appreciative of, of that everybody is. So. And you mentioned that you're 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 catering this to families. What is, what is your turnover rate? Like, are you seeing people staying there three years, five years, like for the long haul? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, I think we've had, you know, um, in my eight years of investing, we've had three people leave. I mean, we, we were getting people that are there for, I got someone there from, you know, 10 years all the way down to, you know, somebody that just left. So it's, it, people come and they stay. Um, and it seems to be a lot of, like I said, a lot of families. And once you, you know, it's kind of a, a key tip for, for the new investor. If you can get a family in there and get them involved in the schools, um, you know, parents and, and once they make friends, you know, people don't want to leave. People don't want to uproot their kids and move and, and get them to a new school and start that whole process over. So, um, you know, if you got, you're able to do that and you're able to provide a, a good house and a, and a, and a good, uh, family dynamic for, for people that are, they're going to take advantage of that and stay and, and treat them well. The turnover from our experience, the turnover cost is, is like nothing too. like, you could literally get away with painting maybe once every 10 years uh, across three tenants. Right. Uh, it might not even be a full paint. It might still be only be touch up at that point. So the, the care uh, that they look after you uh, uh, for, I mean, I think our DuPage County security deposit held back last year was like some crazy low number on average, uh, like next to nothing. Uh, so um, the type of turnover you're doing is is different too. And you have the ability, I think, in Naperville to be able to uh, easily pre-market it. So you can almost have somebody moving in. For sure. At the next person. Are you doing that? Have you done that with your properties? Kind of do that pre-marketing piece? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. So, you know, built into all of our leases, you know, it's that 30 day uh, notice, you know, are you guys going to stay? Are you going to go? Um, and I always, you know, again, it goes back to communication. You, you have that good line of communication with the tenants and, and just let them know, you know, I got to get somebody in there. If you're going to leave, um, I'm going to need some, some access to the house for, you know, showings and whatnot. Um, and most people are fine with that. You know, a, a lot of people work during the day with COVID has been a little bit different. You know, people are still working at home. So it's, it's kind of a little bit more coordination that, that is required on that end. But, um, yeah, I, I always market it, you know, as, as, usually about a month out. Um, and I've had no issue with, with getting somebody filled as soon as that other person leaves. So is there a difference in rent demand, whether it be North or South Naperville, as we've kind of broken up the town into those two areas? Like, is, is it, can you rent faster on the North side versus South? Kind of give your, your opinion on that. Yeah. I, from my experience, I have found that the North side does rent a little bit quicker. Um, you know, I think with, the north side, you get the access to, to the interstates as well. So if you're getting people that are commuting, you know, over to Downers Grove or even into the city, um, it's a lot easier to get on the highway versus, you know, adding another 15, 20 minutes on your drive from, from South Naperville. Um, so I, you know, from my experience, the, the Naperville North, uh, Naperville Central, um, you know, those schools are, again, highly uh, acclaimed schools that people want to be in. And uh, with the metros and everything like that, I think that 
that kind of gives you a little bit of leg up on on getting those north side places rented a little bit quicker than what south side would be. Gotcha. So rents have, uh, I mean, we've been doing business neighborhood for uh, 15 years now and, and rents have gone up uh, considerably. What is the yep. difference in, you know, I'm going to use that. I know you know what I'm talking about here. Is that 2-2 two, two, uh, condo? It might be a second level one or it might be, it has the attached garage, but the townhouse attached type 2-2, two, two, two bedroom, two bath. Uh, like what's the difference in rent you might get from the north part up by Deal Road to the south part down by 95th Street? Like what do you, is that a big difference or what do you kind of see? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be a huge difference, but I, I would see that it'll be a little bit less, you know, like I mentioned before, um, you know, based on finishes and whatnot, you know, like that 16 to 1900 range in the north side, you know, it might be 14 to 17 in the south side. So it's not, it's not going to be a huge difference. Um, but it is going to be, you know, a little bit less just from the convenience side of things. Uh, you know, typically, again, you get a lot more people that are, are going to be commuting and, and needing access to the, to the metros and, and uh, interstate and, you know, downtown Naperville. So um, kind of just gives you that ability to, to raise that rental a little bit than what you would in the south side. Yeah. And then uh, I'll, I'll pull out one other nugget kind of that you said there is uh, days faster, too. Um, if, if you're renting it a week faster than you are down there, you're, you're saving money as well. So money effort. Yeah, somehow. absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I've had no issues on the, on, you know, my North side properties. I, I try to focus on that, you know, North of 75th is kind of my, my niche area of, of where I try to look. Um, and I've had no issues at all getting, getting people in and out, uh, you know, as, as needed. Josh, how are you finding these properties? Like, you know, you're very active there. What, what's the go-to strategy for accumulating these in such a desirable area? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's working a lot with, you know, the private networks, um, trying to network with, with other agents. Um, I've actually just recently tried to um, develop some relationships with some builders. Um, typically they know of landlords and, and, and things that other people might not know. Um, you know, some, sometimes they, people that want to sell, they don't really want to sell the builder. They, they want to have that house, you know, but they, they don't want, they want the house to be gone, but they don't want the house to be torn down and, and built on. Um, they kind of have that emotional connection to it, but um, you know, it, it all goes back to networking and, and really just kind of um, being in such a niche market for myself. You know, I, I kind of know and, and can keep an eye on the areas that I think are, are might come on the market soon. Um, and it's pretty easy to drive, drive the neighborhoods every once in a while. You know, it's, it's only takes me, you know, a half a day to kind of go into the specific areas. Um, you might get a, a coming soon sign in the yard. You might get a for sale by owner. You might get, you know, something that the house is, isn't taken care of and you can just, you know, send a letter to the, to the um, owner. So um, just kind of look for those things really is, is kind of how I approach things. Got it. So for, let's say someone who's just starting out, you know, they don't have that network. They're not known as the niche guy. You mentioned kind of the driving around. What other tips would you tell them um, they can do to, to get started and to actually find deals in the competitive market? Yeah, um, especially in this market, it, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, it, it's with COVID and everything like that in this area. I mean, things are just flying off in, in a matter of hours, but, um, you know, Really, um, <laughs> you know, networking is, is kind of how I've done it. Um, you know, sending letters, you can send letters to people. Uh, oftentimes, you know, they're, you don't get any response. You don't, you don't get that uh, um, desired outcome with, with a lot of those. Um, you know, I, I think it all goes back about who you know uh, and just, you know, talking to people, asking people, telling everybody that you know that you're looking for something. Because somebody somewhere knows somebody that's selling all the time. So you just have to really put yourself out there and and make it known that you're looking um, and you're willing to you're wanting to buy something and, and willing to make it happen. Awesome, awesome. So Naperville, a lot of people uh, might not be able to find deals there. Maybe their numbers don't work there. So they have to resort to some of the surrounding communities. I know uh, back mm -hmm. in 13, when we opened up a second office, we looked at Naperville and then we ended up doing it in Lyle just because uh, we could find yep. uh, dirt cheap rent over there. So uh, kind of give some rundown on the, the what you like around, uh, around Naperville if you're not going to actually be in Naperville proper. Yeah, so... The, a big opportunity that I've found is that Romeoville, Bolingbrook area, um, you get a lot of three ones, three twos, you know, four two, little ranch, 1200 to 1700 
you know, square foot house that um, needs a little TLC on it, but nothing huge. Uh, it gives a lot of opportunity. You know, a lot of people that um, quote unquote can't afford to be in Naperville or don't want to be in Naperville or, you know, whatever the case is, um, it gives you a lot of opportunity as an investor to, to start there. And uh, they usually, you know, from my experience, have, have, I've done a few rentals um, for clients there, but they seem to be, you know, rented very quickly. Um, it, it gives you a little bit of opportunity to add some sweat equity into it by doing some, some projects here and there. Um, but that, those two areas are, have been, you know, a very, very good area for people to kind of start out in and uh, get that lower price point as well. How is it dealing with the village there? Like it, it, first off in Naperville and then going to some of these surrounding places, like actual ease of doing business. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's nothing has been a super headache. I mean, you're going to get your, your uh, pushback on, on certain things, but you know, nothing that, that I've experienced has been, you know, a project stopper by any means. Um, you know, I, I don't do the new build, new construction, um, you know, tear down projects myself. So um, haven't had to do with, you know, a lot of those, those kind of permit new build uh, issues there. But um, for the most part, I mean, the villages and, and the cities had, have been all great. I mean, they're, they're fairly easy to work with and, and, you know, kind of get things done in a mostly timely manner <laughs> as much as you can expect. And, um, you know, it's, it's, they've been, they've been good. Awesome. Josh, we've, we've referenced COVID a few times on the episode. Do you think coming out of this, Naperville is going to be increasing in population, decreasing in population, working from home? Is that something do you think Naperville is going to benefit from? Because it has the trains, it has 88 going into the city, um, but it also it has land. It's, it's massive, and I can see people going out there because, because of that factor as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, over this last year and a half, two years, we've seen a, a huge influx of people coming from the city to Naperville. So, you know, in the last, you know, whatever, 12, 4, 24 months, um, it, it's been a huge influx. And I think that's why things are going off the market so quickly. You know, people were seeing something and they're, and they're jumping at it. Um, so, you know, after COVID, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping things, you know, especially in the downtown area kind of come back. I, there's unfortunately been some businesses down there that have closed shop. Um, I don't think they could uh, get through the, the pandemic here. Um, so I, somebody will take their lease over. I'm sure. Um, I think that, you know, it, it hasn't gone downhill by any means, but it's, you know, see some empty storefronts. It's kind of sad to see that people weren't able to, uh, to get through that. But I think, you know, once, once all this kind of uh, settles out, um, I, I would think that, you know, some people might be heading back to the city. They might, they might, or, um, you know, to different areas. I don't, I don't really know that Naperville will ever be a place that people don't want to be. Um, so I, I don't think that it's going to be uh, a huge swing either way, to be honest with you. Naperville has Apple. <laughs> One of the few places yeah. you can get your phone fixed. And it's got that crazy Starbucks was that roasters type uh, store. So like, I, I would yeah uh, one of three in the nation i think or three in the world i think is of that size so yeah. that is uh i mean Naperville's so amazing i've watched it you know when i was a little kid we used to go to centennial pool but uh that, that's a cool place as well but uh yeah no i i have all uh confidence in, in naperville and, and as far as what it yeah. can investors it, it goes back to like you know ryan smith i think brought this up a few episodes ago just the infrastructure is there the schools are good for sure people will come <laughs> One hundred forty-seven thousand people i was wrong it was 147,000 as a population last year. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a place that people want to be and, and it will be, you know, for the foreseeable future, for sure. Awesome. All right. Good stuff here, Josh. Mark, you ready to wrap? I'm ready to wrap. You ready for uh, these questions, Josh? Yeah, throw them at me. All right. What's your competitive advantage? How have you been able to do this while other people wish they could be doing what you're doing? Uh, I think just consistency, man. Maybe you just got to network. And like I, I mentioned in the previous podcast or previously in the podcast, you just have to put yourself out there. You just got to go to all the meetings, go meet people, shake hands and let people know what you're doing. And somebody somewhere knows somebody. So just keep, uh, keep at it, keep your nose to the ground and, and really just uh, network with as many people as you can. Josh, what is one piece of advice you would tell someone that has yet to buy their first property in the Naperville area? I think to just do it, um, you know, in the Naperville area, you're going to get the good tenants. You're going to have the, the 
want and the need for, for people to be in the area, um, I think you got to jump off the ledge and do it. You got to, you got to take that uh, first, first step and, and Naperville area has been good to me and it, it has been to a lot of other investors that I know. So make sure that, uh, you know, you have your, your ducks in a row, but it's, it's a great process. You just got to jump in and do it. Awesome. So what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Um, I love tracking the stock market. Um, it's kind of a, a hobby that I picked up uh, in lay, you know, since COVID, working at home, doing a lot more things at home, just kind of tracking that. Um, I love to, I got two little ones that I'm, you know, all crazy about. You just started soccer here last weekend. So we're, we're getting into some activities and, and uh, sports. So that's always fun. Um, and, you know, just hanging out with, with them and the wife and, and uh, you know, we love to, Go down to Luminati's every once in a while, get a pizza. That's always something fun to do. That's what's a good book, podcast, or self-development activity that you would recommend to our listeners. Yeah, um, I'm sure, you know, every other investor is going to say the same thing, but uh, Think and Grow Rich is a great one. Uh, in Napoleon Hill, is that right? Um, and uh, Robert Kiyosaki's um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Those have been two awesome books that I, I try to read at least one time every year. Just you always pick up new nuggets. You always pick up new things, new ways to think about things. But um, those have been two great books for me in, uh, in my investing career. Awesome. Besides yourself, name one person in your local network that you would highly recommend to other investors as a quality resource. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that a good resource would have to be your attorney. Um, I think that your, you know, Heather Parker is my, my personal attorney here in Naperville. She's been outstanding. Um, you know, is, is always, always, always looked out for me. Um, you know, finding little things on, you know, closing disclosures or, or um, settlement statements, you know, whatever the case is, um, just kind of looking at, at different, you know, fighting for, um, you know, uh, ask list when we're, we're going to purchase property or fighting, pushing back on things when, when the other side is asking for things, but having a good attorney in your corner is, is awesome. Um, and she's been great to me. Couldn't agree more. Josh, thank you so much. You provide a ton of value. How can our listeners learn more about you? And is there any way they can provide value to you? Yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, on all the social media, uh, outlets, um, obviously, I work at Remax Action there in Lyle. So if you uh, want to look me up that way, um, you know, at email realtor.jdm at gmail.com. Um, shoot me emails. You know, I can, um, you know, put some some links on the, the show notes here to to give my my info to to people. But uh, I'm around, and and just uh, how they can provide, you know, value to me is if you got deals, um, I'm happy to look at them. If you're buying or selling, obviously, I'm an agent, so. Happy to help that way as well. Um, you know, we I work with a, a partner here, so we go all the way up to St. Charles, where where you're at, Mark, and um, you know, down to Plainfield, over to the city. So we're we're kind of everywhere. So if you got anything that you're buying or selling, I'm, we're we're always happy to help. He's a he's a bigger pockets guy, so you can find him on bigger pockets always. That's right. That's right. All right. So we got a Naperville fact here. On a side note, I was doing the research. I didn't realize uh, Sean Payton, the Saints coach, was a Naperville Central grad and played quarterback there. Just as another another little nugget for everyone. All right, yeah, so yeah, so M Mark and Josh, I'll give you guys both a, sh a crack at this. So according to the internet, so this must be true. The top in player in Naperville is, and I'll make it multiple choice. Is it A. Kraft, B. Indian Prairie School District, C. Bimo Harris, or D. Edward Hospital? Mark, I'll give you the first crack at it. Um, Bimo Harris got that big building on 88 there. Um, what was the first option again? Craft. I'll go Bimo Harris. Josh, what are you going Edwards. With? Edwards is correct. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I knew the answer. I knew the answer, Mark. It wasn't fair. <laughs> All right, so the number one. Uh, wow, that, that's awesome. Uh, I will, this, I, anytime I look at that, if I'm looking at an area, it's always the schools and hospital. I, I would have defaulted to school. one of those. I would have guessed the school before the hospital. I didn't realize the hospital was that big. I, I would have as well. Yeah. It's all the right. hospital, but it's, the, it's all the uh, the branches all around. You'll see Edward's little uh, offices all throughout Naperville if you kind of drive the streets. You do, I guess. Yeah, now that you say that. So, um, 
All right. Awesome. Um, Josh, awesome show. Tom, as always. Listeners, if you found Josh added value today, please take 20 seconds and give us a review. And then take two more minutes and please refer us to two other investor friends that you have that would value would uh, get value from our show. So the more uh, we can grow, the more that we could uh, help you uh, with additional content. So Josh, thank you for an awesome show. Tom, thank you as always. Listeners, we will see you soon. Thank you.